Greetings! In case you missed, today will be countdown to Engineers Beta Livestream Part 3. Usually it's on Thursday, so devs moved it to Tuesday. So can we expect Engineers Beta go live tomorrow or day after tomorrow? The possibility is quite high, because I don't think they will release such a big update on Friday. Otherwise, if something goes wrong, they will have to work on weekends, and we know with such a huge update, there will definitely be something wrong. So don't miss today's livestream at 7 pm BST. I am pretty sure on today's livestream, Engineers 2.1 release date will be revealed. So stay tuned. But enough about that, let's talk about shield cell banks again. Did you know the different class shield cells have different shield charging times? Because I did not. All we cared so far was how much heat shield cell generates during 5 second initial charge, so we knew exactly how many heat sinks we need, and how many megajoules of our shields shield cell restored. Now you can add another stat to this list. How many seconds shield cell is active? I hope Frontier did not change how shield cells work in Engineer, because last time they were changed for Horizons. You can see the difference for class 1 up to 8. Blue is before Horizons and green is in Horizons. Class 1 to 4 are less effective than before Horizons and class 5 to 8 more effective. And as you can see, class 7 and 8 hold much more megajoules than before. Much, much more. And that's important because you can see numbers on your screen. And even if we count only time when shields are actually charging, so minus 5 seconds, Class 2, almost 2 seconds, class 4, almost 4, class 6, 8 seconds, and 8, around 17.5, so a lot of time. I've also tried class 6 and 8 rating B shield cell banks to see if there is any difference. And as you can see, there is almost no difference. So what we can tell from these numbers? I can tell you what I would do. I would not use class 6, 7, 8 shield cell banks in open if I would suspect that my enemy has feedback cascade. Class 6 I might use against one enemy. If I am boosting past him, I can try and get away with charging my shields. But if I am fighting against a wing of enemies, then forget about it. Is it end of shield cell banks on large ships? It's too early to tell. Devs promised to listen to our feedback and balance things. So let's see what actually feedback cascade will do in live build. Will it still be one-shot shields down? Will it have a chance of taking down enemy shields? Will it have any feedback? Or a shot from feedback cascade will force your shield cell to malfunction and stop charging your shields. There are many ways to balance that. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. It's just funny to see such an option given to railguns, which already are one of the most used weapons in the game in player versus player encounters. I would understand this ability given to Plasma, because it's harder to hit, it has lower projectile speed, and you should be pretty close to enemy to hit it. And in my opinion, Plasma is harder to use than Railguns. So make sure you watch today's dev livestream about engineers, and this week we should have more answers and questions. Fly safe, commanders!